Question number 27 for the TN Ready practice test for integrated math 2. Well, at least it's number 27 in 2019. There's a newer version of this test, and the same question, I'll just tell you the numbers change. The table shows the depth of water in a pond as it is being filled. What is the average rate of change in meters per minute of the depth of the water in the pond between t equals 2 and t equals 5? So that 2 minutes and 5 minutes. Round your answer to the nearest hundredth. Now, the big thing here that sometimes people get weirded out by is average rate of change. This right here. What is average rate of change? Well, when we try to find the rate of change of things, we're really looking at them linearly. So if I were to do about a bunch of points, so say I was trying to do line of best fit, and I did this, um, even though that would be a terrible use of that line. It would be close to the middle. There we go. So if I wanted to find the average rate of change from B here and here, despite the fact that it fluctuates all over the place, I would just use the slope formula, right? So I want to know how much it goes up versus how much it goes over. Rise over run. And to convert that into slope formula, I would say y sub 2 minus y sub 1 x sub 2 sub for subscript minus x sub 1. And sub here uh, means subscript because when you have a subscript it means it's a label there's no like it's not x squared it's just this the second x that you have so now we need to find our group set between two and five so i'm going to make two points at two and five so i have two and 0 0.98 and then i have five and 1.34 uh, sometimes you'll have like a graph and it'll do this sort of thing and they'll want to know what the average rate of change is and they'll give you this notation. It's the same type of thing. They'll want to know at negative one this point and you'll make that point and then at three, say three's up here somewhere. Then you'd make a point there and then you just do the slope formula. So sometimes you'll see this notation. I'm just letting you know that's a possibility. Now, I'm ready to work. I mean, it's not that much stuff. And I will start out again by rewriting that the slope formula is this. Which is based off the Pythagorean theorem. If you want to plot these two points and do the Pythagorean theorem with them, have at it. Y sub 2. And I'm going to go ahead and mark these. This is the first x. This is the first y. This is the second x. This is the second y. That way I know where everything goes. So your y sub 2 should be the second set. Okay, and make sure they're matched. The 1.4 goes to the 5, and they're on top of each other. That's good. The 0.98 goes to the 2. Yep, so the, frac the ratio is set up appropriately. Now, from here I have, um, if you, depending on your calculator, you might just type the first number in and then divide it because you know that 5 minus 2 is 3, right? That's an easy thing to do. 3, you have the option to actually uh, turn it into a fraction. So you just hit alpha and then y equals and it gives you this little menu there. Um, and then you can type in. I'm just telling you you can do it. I don't suggest you do it. I would do it the other way, but whatever. So you get 0.12, and that is the correct answer, and that's all you really need to do here. You're just trying to find that part. If you wanted to just quick type it in and do... You can divide that by 3 and get 0.12. But that's what average range of change is. It's just asking you to find the two points, at the one at the beginning and the one at the end of the interval. That negative 1, 3 thing is called interval notation. I should have mentioned that. Um, they want you to find the two points at the beginning and the end of the interval and then simply do a slope formula to find out what the actual uh, linear relationship is between those two points. That's all you need to do.